Hey crafters, it's Amanda. I feel the need to preface this next clip you're gonna watch with a little bit of an explanation because I'm gonna show you some footage of when I was on vacation, but the thing is when you're at the beach, there's salt water, and salt water can be really hard on cameras and stuff. So I'm actually filming with a Yi 4K right now, which is super awesome. I'm loving it. But anyway, my dad was using this camera, and plus, you know, you can't get as up close and personal because the salt water is so corrosive. So I had another cheaper camera that was waterproof that I used to film this next part that I'm going to show you. But I want to apologize because it's kind of really horrible footage because first off the weather was really overcast so the lighting was terrible as I'm walking on the beach. Second of all, it doesn't do good audio and I think also it was like really clogged with sand and salt water so it was like still filming and all but it wasn't like good quality. So anyways, there's going to be some interesting footage coming next of me on the beach. But regardless, I just want to give you guys a clip of what was going on in my life and a little bit of my vacation. And then also, I'm going to have a craft project that I'm going to do at the end of the video. I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek. Ooh. I don't know what that noise was. But anyways, watch through the video. You can see a little bit about my vacation. And you can watch how I made my souvenir item. So here it goes. to Portsmouth Island off of Ocracoke, which is in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. So you can see the things I found. Right now I'm letting them dry off. I rinse the sand off 
And some of these I will save for when I get home. I will do the, use the method that I showed in Tutorial Tuesday, I think Episode 2, where I use like the muriatic acid and stuff. But because we are on a little island where everything they sell here is crazy overpriced, plus we rode here in a truck, it doesn't make sense to buy any here and do it here. So I'm going to wait till I get home. You can see my nice scotch bonnet there and a couple of broken ones. But anyways, I'm going to be using these shells once they dry for a couple different projects. And I'm going to have one of them featured in this video, and then the next few will be in their own separate videos. But here's just a look of my collection drying until it's time to use them for crafting. So here I am with some of my shells. These have all already dried. I've got just an assortment here that I've gathered to use for this project. And this is actually kind of a take off of something I saw in one of the gift shops here. All the picture you're looking at right now on screen, that was a picture of something I had in the gift shop. It was kind of cute, but it was like six bucks. And I was like, you know, those little shells probably aren't even from the island. So I decided to do my own take on this, and that's what we're going to work on today. We made spaghetti the other night, so I've got this jar that had spaghetti sauce in here. So this is what I'm going to be using as my jar. And then I've just got an assortment of shells here. So because the jar is big, I chose to gather larger shells because they'll fit in here better. And then in this guy here, I've got a bunch of smaller shells that will kind of fill in the gaps. And then I have a nice bag of sand straight from the beach. When you get your sand, you want to make sure that you try to get dry sand because you don't want to fill this with a whole bunch of wet stuff and then it grow mold. Uh, but the nice thing is, if it does end up getting wet, you can always take the shells out, take the sand out, let things dry again, and you'd be good to go. So there's a couple things I'll mention. I'm going to start filling my jar here. Is If you start just dropping them in here, the shells are going to want to fall down to the bottom. And so if that's the look you're going for, then that's fine. But if I keep just plopping them in here, they might all end up just stacking, kind of nesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of set my shells in there and almost stand them up. So I'm going to tilt my jar and let them slide to the bottom so I can angle them different ways. I'm going to kind of rotate the jar around as I add my shells. And I'm starting with the bigger shells because the smaller shells will be able to fall in around them and nestle to the bottom and just stuff your jar. If you don't have long fingers, you might want to get, you know, like, maybe a bamboo skewer or something that you can use to get in there a little bit better. I got this shell. I thought this was kind of cool. It's broken, but it's got a lot of neat stripes and colors in it. So I'm going to put this guy near the edge and just keep filling up my jar. Cute little shell here. And as you get closer to the end, you might have to kind of pick and choose which shells you really want in there and which ones you're not going to put in there because they might not all fit. Let's see. Pick some of these smaller shells here in a minute to nestle in here. I've got this Scotch bonnet here. Looks pretty good from this side until you get around to the big hole in the back, but I'm going to use this one to put in my jar. Kind of near the top here, just nestle it in the top. Let's see, I'm going to go with this shell because I really like the colors in that one. So that's some neat stripes, and I'm going to fill it all the way to the tippy top. And now that I've got my big shells in there, I'm just going to take these smaller ones that I have in this shell right here, and I'm just going to kind of drop them in. So I'm just taking these little shells and I'm putting them in here. Another thing you can do is you kind of jiggle your jar around. It'll kind of help those smaller shells fall down, and it'll also kind of show you how things are sitting. So you can see I've got a big air bubble there. But as I shake it, nothing's really filling that in, so I don't have to worry about that. But if there might be, you know, air pockets on other sides where it's a little bit of shaking. Your shells might shift around and fill in the jar better. And I'm going to fill all the way to the very top here with my shells because I want to be able, like, even if I turn the jar over, there to be a little bit of give, but for the most part, stay pretty still. I found this one this morning. Isn't that cute? And just have fun with your jar. Make it look however you want it to, because it was your vacation, and you can customize it however you want instead of buying the generic one in the gift shop. Plus, since we made pasta, we gotta eat, so food's always good. I'm gonna stick these last couple on the top here. And to test it out to see if it's filled the way I want it, I'm going to put the lid on here. And I'm just going to kind of turn it upside down, turn it around. And you can see they're all staying in there pretty good. I like them not moving around a ton. Um, so I'm going to leave my shells like this. And then the last thing I want to do is add sand. 
And as I said before, try to grab loose sand that's already mostly dry. This might be a little wet, so I might leave the jar open to finish airing out. And I'm just going to pour this in here. Shake it around as you need to. And I waited to add the sand because it's going to be harder to add your shells in and get them to sit all the way on the bottom if they're hitting sand right away. So just pour and shake. And the sand will work its way down to the right of the bottom. I'm going to screw my lid on and really shake the sand down to the bottom. This might take a little bit of time, so if you need to pause the video and shake your sand down to the bottom of your jar. And also this will help loosen up your little shells and might make them appear on the sides a little more. So I finished shaking my jar around most of the sand's at the bottom. There's a couple spots like there where the sand's still on the side and I kind of like the way the sand looks. What's also cool is if you want to change up how the sand's look, you can just dump the jar over, let the, shake the sand to higher up in the jar, shake the sand back down, do however you want. And you can also change the amount of sand. I just wanted a little bit because I didn't want it covering up my shells a bunch, but then it kind of looks cute and gives that nice nestled in there look. And then the last thing we're going to do is I've got this nice giant cockle shell here. And we're going to glue this with some super glue on the lid because, you know, not that, not that I have anything against... Barilla brand, but that doesn't really remind me of the beach, so I'm going to cover it up. <laughs> so I've got some nice crazy glue super glue here, and I'm going to take the lid off the jar. There's a little bit of sand on here from when I poured the sand in, so you want to make sure you brush that all off so it doesn't impact how well the shell stays glued to the lid. One last thing to consider is which shell you use. I'm going with this shell. I had a couple different ones, but I liked the amount that this one covers it up. You can see it sticks out a little bit in the back here. But I felt like this shell was a good size, not too overpowering, but it also had some nice color and patterns. So I felt like this was a good balance of what I was going for. So this crazy glue is a little squished, so it's probably going to ooze out really fast. And I'm just going to go around the top. And then come around the side. You want to make sure you have plenty of glue so you get a nice strong hold. And once this dries, I'll probably go around and do a second coat coming from the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of set this on here. Get it positioned the way I want. I'm going to let this sit for a minute or two. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing over and squeeze some more glue to let it kind of run in there and fill in any more gaps. That way this holds really well. I'm going to come to all the ports where the shell is touching the lid. And I'm going to dab extra glue so we get a nice strong hold on there. And make sure you don't glue your fingers on here like I almost did. The crazy glue, it's like you can't touch anything. Like I have my two fingers touching it and I almost glued them together. That'd be a great tutorial. You come thinking that you're going to build a nice souvenir and instead we just glue our fingers together. Another thing I'll mention while we're waiting on the glue to dry is these areas where the lid is sticking out some, you can always go ahead and paint those before or after you put the shell on. You can paint them white, paint them just a color that will coordinate and blend in so that way it's not so noticeable and so you don't have established in Parma 1877 on your little souvenir jar. I was okay with the way it looks. I might, when I get home and I have paint, instead of buying paint on the island of everything's overpriced, I might paint it a little, little bit, uh, but I think it's kind of cute the way it looks right now. So we're going to let this sit here and dry and then we'll put it all together. So I am back home now. I'm not at the beach anymore, which is kind of sad. But anyways, I'm now able to finish up this jar. I decided that I'm going to add just a little extra touch, you know, pizzazz, because you can see how you can still see the jar lid on here. So I picked up some twine, I guess you'd call it. It had a weird name on there. This stuff. I'll, I'll find the link for this and put it in the description below. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and be gluing this around here just to add, cover up the lid and just add a little extra touch of pizzazz, I guess. So I'm just going to use my hot glue gun because with super glue, you know, you've got to be really fast and really precise the first time. Hot glue gives me a little more wiggle room. And I've already measured this out, and I'm going to kind of wrap it around twice. So it's going to be seen from all sides. Come around like that to give you an idea. So I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and start gluing it on here. Of course you don't need to glue the entire way around, just enough so that way it stays on there securely. 
You actually don't go into the threads of the lid because you don't want to not be able to put your lid back on. That kind of defeats the whole point of the lid. I think I'm actually going to trim it right around here. I'm going to trim it kind of at an angle so I can push it against her, make it really flat. I'm just going to glue this last little bit on, nice and secure. The nice thing also about using hot glue for this part is I don't have to wait a really long time for it to dry. And I also don't have to worry about gluing my fingers together. And now I've got my jar here, and I'm going to screw this on. And there you go. It hides that ugly blue salsa jar lid and it just adds an extra little touch of kind of a beach vibe. Also another cute idea is if you want to tie a piece of the twine around here, tie it in a little bow. And I'm also going to use some puffy paint to write down where we went in the year I went on this vacation and then I'll show you the finished product. So you can see I'm starting to write on here. I'm just using this nice fun blue puffy paint. Um, what I found helps me when I write stuff is if I start in the middle, so that's why it just says coke, not ochre coke yet, um, because C is kind of in the middle, so it kind of helps me figure out and line up well. So that's why I started there, and then I'm going to work back this way, and also add 2017 below it. So I'm just gently squeezing, trying to keep my letters even, but not worrying about whether or not they're perfect. Also, try to make sure you spell stuff correctly, because I'm trying to look a little goofy. I'm kind of adding dots at the end, just squeezing a little bit more. I'm trying to make sure I spell it, because I'm writing it kind of backwards. You want to watch out for air bubbles in your puffy paint? And also, what's fun is you can pick any color you want with the puffy paint. I went with the blue, because it kind of is different than a lot of the colors I have, but it also ties in with like this bright orange shell there. So I like that. And then my final O. I'm kind of using the sand line at the bottom to line up where I write my letters. And now it says ochre coke. I'm gonna put 2017 right below it on the sand so I remember the year I went there. So again, the A and the C are the middle so I'm gonna kind of line up. And now all I have to do is let it dry. And here we are. Here is my completed jar. My souvenir that I kind of copied what I saw in one of the gift shops. But then I think I feel like I took it to the next level and really personalized it. I think it turned out really cute, a great way to hold my shells, keep great memories with this also. And you might notice there's a couple little spots where I accidentally got some puffy paint. I actually smudged the E and had to completely redo it. But the nice thing is when it's wet, it wipes off really easy. And then these little spots up here, I'm just letting them dry. And then I'll be able to scrape them off, you know, with like my fingernail or something once they're dry. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. The letters are still drying. But overall, I think it's going to be really awesome. A great souvenir, great way to remember this vacation. And I hope that this inspires you to make your own little souvenir jar. And I hope that you enjoy your summer and collect these memories from your summer vacation. So in my last few moments here, I figured I'm going to tell you part of the story of my vacation. And you can also go look at my blog. I'm going to be sharing it with I, when I post some different crafts. But anyways, the start of the vacation was we were going to Ocracoke Island in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Except like a week or two before it was time for us to leave, there was the big power outage because a construction company drove a beam accidentally into the power line that feeds the island. So power was off and we we're like, okay, well now what? And then literally the night before we were going to leave on vacation, the power came back on. So all week leading up to the vacation, I was under the impression of, oh, we're not actually going out of town because of the power outage because they had evacuated all tourists. And then literally the night before we had to leave, the power came back on. And so we're like, ah! We're gonna go on vacation! So it was like this mad scramble to get packed and stuff. So anyways, that's part of why I haven't been posting as much this past week, plus then I was actually like on vacation, you know. So anyways, that's just kind of the start of my vacation story. It was a crazy week, it was awesome, but there were all kinds of misadventures in there. So go check out my blog if you want to hear more about it and keep coming back to my videos and I'll keep sharing little stories from the vacation. But until next time, have a great week.